Canadian creepy content must be celebrated, so of course we're coming back with some creatures from Trevor Henderson himself. Famous for integrating his creations into digital photography for an extra realistic experience, he's created dozens of fearsome frights that will haunt your dreams for years to come. More often than not, he'll add a little bit of lore to the pictures he posts as well. After doing this for years, there's a little Trevor Henderson monsterverse with plenty crossing into their contemporaries' domains. Of course, there's plenty of fan art and other associated media created in reference to these ghastly ghouls, but there's no topping the originals, so let's see some of Trevor's more terrifying fiends. Hello, horror heads and welcome back to the scariest channel on YouTube, Top 5 Scary Videos. I'm your horror host, Keegan Hughes, and today you're going to be counting down the Top 5 Scary Trevor Henderson Creatures Part 2. Before we get going, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more Painted Phantoms. And if you like what you see, make sure to check out more of Trevor's work, maybe buy a print or two for your grand haul. Links are down in the description. Alright, let's begin. Coming in at number 5, we've got Long Horse. To be honest, I didn't even consider Long Horse for our first video. The lengthy lad doesn't exactly qualify as monster in my eyes, they're definitely more friend than foe. But hey, I think there were at least a dozen requests for our equine interlopers, so I'll include the stretchy soothsayer this time. Admittedly, Long Horse is a very scary creature to look at. It has a horse-like skull that always seems to be floating in the air. The skull is supported by a seemingly infinitely long body that tends to bend and twist at impossible angles. Nobody's ever seen a Long Horse end. The long, constantly cracking neck will always disappear behind something before anyone can get to the source. It doesn't follow the rules of linear space and can really appear from anywhere. If this wasn't a friendly fellow, it would be pretty terrifying, but thankfully Longhorse smells like cinnamon and wants to be of help. Ancient depictions of this creature show it helping out humans, often protecting them from danger and warning them of impending disaster. So it's been around for a while and often lends a helping hand to those who might need it. It even enters dreams to do so at times. The non-linearity of its movement seems to mean that it can teleport to different locations to warn of doom. Some say that Longhorse is Sirenhead's eternal rival, with the two creatures at odds about how to treat humans. Sirenhead being a murderous lunatic and Longhorse attempting to keep folks alive. Still, it's hard to look at a spatially anomalous creature with a loudly cracking neck and think, friend. Coming in at number 4, we've got Big Charlie. Anyone who has witnessed footage from a factory farm or something similar will feel this one a little extra. Big Charlie is a fleshy abomination that's always growing. It was discovered after escaping the slaughterhouse where it was being held. Somebody reported a mangy cow wandering the highway to animal control, and when they discovered how strange it was, the SCP Foundation got involved. When Big Charlie was born, the folks working the slaughterhouse didn't know what to do. It was extremely gross looking and didn't really react to anything. They tried killing it, first with a cattle gun, then by cutting its throat. When neither worked, they literally butchered it where it stood. Cutting off all the flesh until only bone remained, the butchers assumed that it would die soon after. But instead, all the flesh grew back. Big Charlie can't be killed. Some accept it for what it is, free utility grade beef. Some avoid it as best they can because it's not natural. And some, like the owner of the slaughterhouse, worship Big Charlie as a religious idol. To each their own, I suppose. If being fed mysterious, ever-regenerating meat doesn't concern you, Big Charlie's appetite might. It's not generally dangerous to humans, but does have a wicked hankering for just about everything. It'll eat hay, grass, bricks, even other cows. So don't get too close or you might end up being assimilated into the meat monster. From time to time, flesh will simply fall away from Big Charlie's body. When this happens, the bits and pieces often become creatures themselves. There's the lamb, which takes on the appearance of a tall, four-legged sheep consisting entirely of flesh. And then there's Nugget, the lovable little meatball who skitters around and eats crackers. How nice. Coming in at number three, we've got the Garbager. If you thought raccoons were a little freaky, then you're not ready for this one. Lock up your trash real tight unless you're willing to come face to face with a monster. If you do end up leaving some rotten garbage out in the open, you might be treated to the sounds of rummaging and foraging. Look out the window and you could see the garbager. This red-faced quadruped is attracted to refuse and litter from yesterday's hunt, if you know what I mean. It's unknown why the garbager's face is red, some think it's covered in blood, while others say it's just a coloration. Dark eyes and a hole for a mouth are set in the red dome and the rest of its body is a dingy gray. Nobody's commented on how it smells, but I would assume based on its interests that it just smells terrible. But just because it has a horrid odor doesn't mean that it's all bad. Apparently if you leave trash out that it finds appealing, you might be rewarded with a gift. Rotten food is the garbager's favorite. Some of the gifts it's been known to leave for those who donate spoiled supper include shiny rocks, fruit peel arrangements, bones, shells, feathers, bottle caps, foil, and at one point, a singular glove. Huh, I guess it is kind of nice now that I think about it. 
like the tooth fairy of garbage, but instead of money, you get slightly nicer garbage. All right, garbager, you get a pass. It still looks really creepy though. I think twice about putting out the garbage after dark. Coming in at number two, we've got the god of roadkill. Yeah, that doesn't sound good. Doesn't look good either. I mean, it looks wicked, but I wouldn't want to drive past that on a country road late at night. This thing is hideous and I don't trust those eyes. As big as a van, this giant skinless featherless bird crawls around roads at night using its long skeletal arms. In all likelihood, the god of roadkill may have originated as roadkill himself. He is missing legs after all. Let's consider that face though. The god of roadkill's eyes don't look real. In fact, they appear to be drawn on. That white, sharp, bony face might very well be a mask. And if that's the case, I do not want to see what's behind it. No, thank you. Nobody seems to know what this creature's purpose is though. Maybe it's a memorial figure standing witness to all the innocent creatures splattered across concrete and asphalt every day. Folks tend to encounter it while driving at night and will often crash soon after. Could this be a sort of revenge against the motorists who ran over animals on the road? According to Trevor, the god of roadkill is meant to take souls to the other side. So it could be an agent of death or any number of other underworld servants. Definitely something that you don't want to spot while taking a late night drive. Trevor also says that the god of roadkill is always sad and angry, which makes sense considering that this idol represents all these squashed and splattered beings seen on roadways around the world. And finally at number one, we've got breaking news. While I do know that breaking news can often be scary, I'm not referring to the 24 hour news cycle. This time I'm talking about the gigantic creature walking about leveling buildings and causing general chaos. It's known as breaking news because it tends to be reported as such with terrifying images attached to the newscasts. Nobody knows the origins of these horrid beasts and their goals are a total mystery. The humanoid is big enough to destroy entire cities, walking about like a kaiju and flattening buildings. In fact, in many of the places it's shown up, nearby settlements end up being totally abandoned for fear of it returning. Even if there were only one, we'd have plenty to worry about, but it is likely that there are more out there. They've been spotted in different areas over relatively large distances, leaving some to speculate that there could be many gigantic humanoids spreading destruction. If this is the case, we're in great danger. How does one artist create so many compelling creatures? It's a mystery to me, that's for sure. What did you think of the list? Do these monsters give you the heebie-jeebies? The chills? What's your favorite Trevor Henderson monster? Who's your favorite horror artist? Make sure you let me know down in the comments. Speaking of comments, let's take a look at some of your more immaculate ones from the top five scary movie monsters that'll keep you up tonight, part two. Hans Packer says, the fly is so disturbing, I can't imagine I will ever watch it again. That's horror. I also think the pale man is an amazing creation. When something like the fly hits that level of disturbing and gross, I can't help but want to watch it again immediately. But hey, it's not for everyone. Cosmokun says, an anti-contraceptive movie about a monster baby? Anyone else find that perplexing? Seems like even more reason to take a contraceptive to me. Yeah, there are some mixed messages there for sure. Maybe the whole thing is just anti-baby? Andrew Crushell says, Keegan's love of horror movies goes well with his Maple Leaf fandom. Every Leafs game usually ends up a bloodbath. Yeah, we win by a mile, it gets stomped. I was actually really hoping that Kyle Clifford would bring some additional carnage to the ice this year, but he didn't have too much time to throw down before all the cancellations. Lita Gibson says, do I watch too many horror films? None of these made me cringe. Well, Freddy and the First Nightmare on Elm Street got me as a kid, but I didn't lose sleep, even at seven. If you've been watching horror movies since the age of seven, I think you might be desensitized at this point. You've reached the point where you realize monsters are cool, not scary, and people are more evil than any creature. Jexer says, speaking of looking at your own Bones, how's the foot doing, Keegan? That's pretty good these days. The boot is off and I'm walking around normally and hopefully I'll be back on the skateboard soon. And Mad Fez Blood Elf says veiny heads everywhere. Yeah, people seem to have an adverse reaction to things like that. I wonder why. And that's all the time we have for today. Before I grab the wrong grail, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more hysterical horror. Also, if you did enjoy today's list, consider checking out more of Trevor Henderson's work. Support the art you want to see. Links will be in the description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. After doing this for years, there's... There we go. But hey, I think that there were... we are we are why yeah Somebody... After being fed, whoop, beep, 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 beep. it's unknown. Whoop. Dark eyes and a wide hole for a mouth are set in the rigid dome. Rigid? Jeez Louise. I'd think twice about putting out the garbage out. I'd think whoop. as big as a vein. Folks tend to quit. Or any number of other. Or any number of. <laughs> the humanoid is big enough to walk around and destroy entire cities. Nope. Even if there were only one, we'd little Kazuma Kun says, and and little. That's what he said. Yeah. I was actually really hoping that Kyle Clifford would have been some little.